Thanks for joining us for Christ Kids TV. Let's begin with making the big sign of the cross. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you so much for a fantastic day that we get to spend together as your people. Lord, may we learn from you and with you and each other. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Day, Nazareth. This is Beth Laham, and here's the news for today. It is reported that an angel has been sighted outside the house of a young lady in Nazareth. Witnesses say the angel keeps missing the young girl, but has come by with some big news for her. Stay tuned as this story progresses. This just in, a decree has been issued by Caesar Augustus. Let us go to Chris Muss's coming for more on this. Chris? 
Thanks, Beth. Yes, I'm here in Rome where we're getting the news right now. Apparently, Caesar Augustus has sent out a decree. We're really excited to hear what this news is all about. There's some speculation as to what this would be about. We'll find out soon when the royal press secretary addresses the crowd. Back to you. Wow, a decree? We look forward to more on that as we get to hear from the press secretary. But before they come on, we have to go to a commercial break. Hey. 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 Are you ever trying to talk hey. to somebody, but your voice hey. is just too quiet hey. to get their attention, and hey. they can't hear you at all? Hi. Guy Buttersnaps with the Great Deals Network, and boy oh boy do we have a deal for you. Introducing the Loud Bugle. <laughs> Introducing the Megaphone. The Megaphone uses massive science to turn your soft whispers into loud yells. All you have to do is talk into this end and your voice will be magically transported to this end but louder. Perfect for parties, last minute gifts, etc. But wait, there's more. If you hold it backwards, it makes your voice quieter. See? Well, actually, actually, I don't think it does that. B but wait, there's more. Call now and we'll add in this awesome rainbow effect. So, call 1-800-555-5555 to get your megaphone today. Hear ye, hear ye. There's going to be a census of the Roman Empire. Any questions? Madam Secretary, Madam Secretary, Madam Secretary, Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary. What is a census? Caesar wants an accurate count of everyone in the empire. Madam Secretary, Madam Secretary, Madam Secretary. Uh, now, what will this census look like? Everyone should go to their hometown to be counted. This is the town your family is from, so we can get an accurate count. Well, you've heard it here first. We must all go to our hometowns to get counted in the census that Caesar Augustus decreed today. Back to you, Beth. Thanks, Chris. Well, folks, that wraps up our news broadcast for today. Stay classy, Nazareth. And now, and now it's, time it's time for the memory, the memory verse. verse. Hey, everyone. I'm Miss Kate, and I'm so excited to teach you the first part of the memory verse that we'll be learning during Advent. This fall, we've been learning about the prophets and hearing about the messages from God that they shared. We even learned about a few prophets who told about Jesus' coming long before he was ever born. Our memory verse for Advent actually comes from one of these prophets. Do you remember Isaiah? Isaiah shared that God promised to send the world a baby named Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel is Jesus. Remember, we made these baby Jesus ornaments. And I asked you to hang them somewhere where you would see it every day to help us remember that God always keeps his promises. The Bible verse from Isaiah 9-6 that's on our baby Jesus ornament is actually going to be our memory verse for Advent. It says this, A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Today, I'm going to teach you some motions to go along with the first part of our verse. Remember that we're going to repeat our memory verse in motions every week. So if you don't get it the first time, don't worry. Are you ready? Come on, let's stand up together. 
So the first part of our verse says, a child is born to us, a son is given to us. And we're gonna pretend like we're rocking a baby in our arms because Jesus was born into this world a baby, just like you and me. And Jesus is God's son. Then the next part of our verse says this, and authority will be on his shoulders. We're gonna to touch our shoulders for that part. And what this means is that Jesus is the boss. He's powerful and we should listen and follow him. Let's try it again, and this time, I want you to repeat each part after me with the motions. A child is born to us, a son is given to us. And authority will be on his shoulders. Great job. Let's see if we can try it one more time all together. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. You got it. The rest of our memory verse tells us about some names of Jesus. Throughout Advent, the Milheim family, Clara, Anna, and Mary, will help us add a new name of Jesus to our memory verse each week. Then, during pastor time, we'll learn a little bit more about what that name means. By Christmas Eve, we'll know our whole memory verse and be ready to celebrate Jesus's birthday. If you still have your baby Jesus ornament, you can move it to your Christmas tree, but make sure it's front and center so your whole family remembers that Jesus is the reason for the season. It's pastor time. It's pastor time. It's pastor time. Yay. Hey, boys and girls. I'm so glad to be with you on Christ Kids TV today, the first Sunday of Advent. You know, when I was your age, I used to love to be an acolyte. I used to love to light the candles in worship, especially during Advent, when we had these this special group of candles. What's Advent, though, you might ask? Well, let me come back to that. First, we're going to start about this story about this prophet, this man named Isaiah, who is speaking to God's people, and the people are afraid. So Isaiah is talking with them when they're afraid. They're afraid of the kings and of the countries that are around them. They're afraid that they're going to be attacked. They're going to be conquered. They're going to be wiped out. They're looking for a savior, a king, a a person, a ruler, somebody who could come in and save the day, who could save them and bring wisdom and peace. Oh, and they've been waiting for this king for a long time. When Isaiah says to them, a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders, he's saying that there will be a day. There will be a day when a child will be born who will rule over us and over all people everywhere. You see, that's what it means when he says the authority will be on his shoulders. He will grow up to hold the responsibility of governing the people. Sometimes people say he will shoulder the responsibilities. It will be right here. So we know Jesus is that child that Isaiah is talking about. Many years later, Jesus, the king they've been waiting for, is finally born. Jesus grows up and he teaches us how to live together, gives us the rules, how to treat one another, how to love one another. We know that Jesus also suffers and dies on a cross for us. But you know what? That's not the end of the story. He rises from the dead. Jesus comes back to life. You see, when he dies, he defeats death. He takes all of our sins and, and all of our death and dies with them and rises so that we too can live forever with him and with God in heaven. You know what? Jesus promises us that he'll come back again. He'll come back, he will come to earth a second time, and what a joyous day that will be. And now, now during this time of Advent, you see, we're not simply counting down the weeks until Christmas. We are waiting. 
We are waiting until Jesus is to come again, and he will. So we light this first Advent candle, which we are calling the prophecy or the hope candle. We light this candle as we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God with us, another name for Jesus, Emmanuel. So join me and join all of us here at Christ Lutheran over the next four weeks as we wait. We wait for Jesus, Emmanuel, to come again. Boys and girls, I hope you have a great day. God bless you. Bye now. If you are one of our older friends, click on the Deep Blue Bible or skip to the timestamp below. If you are one of our younger friends, click on the Spark Bible or wait five more seconds. Hey everyone, it's Miss Kate. Happy first Sunday in Advent. Advent is the special time before Christmas. Ad means two and vent means come. So Advent means to come. And it's a time when we prepare and wait for someone very important to come. Do you know who that very important person is? No, it's not Santa. <laughs> it's Jesus. Christmas is the day we celebrate Jesus' birthday and remember that Jesus is the Savior God promised. Long before Jesus was ever born, some of God's prophets told people that Jesus was coming. 
We've learned about a few of these prophets this fall and heard their messages about Jesus. Like Isaiah, who said that God promised to send the world a baby named Emmanuel. And we can't forget about Jeremiah, who said that God promised to send a good ruler from King David's family. Today, we're going to hear from one more of God's prophets who told people about Jesus long before he was ever born. This prophet's name is Micah. God sent Micah to an itty bitty, teeny tiny town called Bethlehem to tell the people there some good news. Let's read our story and find out what Micah tells the people of Bethlehem about Jesus. Our story is called A Ruler from Bethlehem and this is Micah. Micah was a prophet. He spoke to the people for God. During the time when Micah was alive, God's people were afraid. They felt sad and hopeless. God sent Micah to the people of Bethlehem, one of the smallest groups of God's people, with some unbelievable news. This is the good news that Micah announced to God's people. From you, little Bethlehem, will come a wonderful leader for the whole world. He will be like a good shepherd who loves and takes care of each sheep in his flock. He will take care of all people, especially those who need extra help. All God's people will be safe with this leader because he will lead with peace and fairness. He will be the greatest leader the world has ever seen. There is hope. Live with hope, you people of Bethlehem. Wow, that was some good news and Micah delivered it right when God's people needed it most. They were feeling scared and sad and hopeless. They had no leader to show them God's love. But Micah said that someone was coming from their town, itty bitty, teeny tiny Bethlehem, who would be the greatest leader the world had ever seen. God promised to give the world a leader who would love us, teach us, and save us. But not just us, all people. Jesus is the wonderful leader that God promised. When Micah shared this good news with the people of Bethlehem, it gave them hope. And then, hundreds of years later, Everything that Micah told the people of Bethlehem came true. Jesus was born in a stable in Bethlehem. And during Advent, I'll be using this nativity to help us learn the story of Jesus' birth. A nativity is a display that shows the birth of Jesus. Each week, I'll be adding a new piece to the nativity and telling you a part of the story of Jesus' birth, the very first Christmas. If you have a nativity set at home, I'd love for you to do this with me. Just have your nativity set near you each week when you're watching the Spark Lesson right here on Christ Kids TV. I can't wait to tell you more next week. For today, Let's close in prayer. I have a special prayer with motions that we're going to repeat together each week of Advent. And this prayer is going to help us remember what Christmas is really all about. Not Santa, but Jesus. And this prayer will remind us that Advent is all about preparing and getting ready but not just preparing our houses with decorations, not just preparing our Christmas trees with presents, but preparing our hearts 
for Jesus. So are you ready to learn the Advent prayer? You can repeat the motions and the words after me. It starts like this. We're gonna hold up four fingers for the four Sundays in Advent. And it goes like this. Four, three, two, one. Can you say that part? I'm just gonna touch each finger as you say it. Count the weeks till Jesus comes. Good. And then for the next part, we're gonna pretend like our four fingers are like the candles in the Advent wreath. And then we're gonna use a finger on the other hand to go through and light our candles. And it'll look like this. Each week, we add another light. Our hope for Jesus growing bright. We pray, we share, we do our part to welcome Jesus to our heart. Amen. Great job. Remember, we're gonna do that prayer every week. So if you didn't get it today, don't worry. You'll get it next time. And I can't wait to tell you more next time. We'll add to our nativity and I'll tell you more of Jesus's birthday story. I can't wait to see you then. Bye. Thanks for joining us this week on Christ Kids TV. Hey everyone, welcome back to Christ Kids TV. I have a question for you. What if someone told you that they had sent you the most amazing birthday present ever and it was just waiting for you to find it somewhere in your house? How would you even know where to look? I mean, it could be anywhere. You might ask for a hint. So, okay, fair enough. Maybe you'd be told you could look either in the kitchen or in your bedroom. Well, that's helpful, but it could still take a lot of time because you don't know how big or how small. You really kind of don't know exactly what you're looking for, so you'd have to look at every teeny tiny little place imaginable. Do you think it'd be helpful to have another hint? I know I would want one. Well, finally, if you were told exactly what room to look in and where you should search, you wouldn't have to waste any time looking anywhere else in your house, which sounds pretty good. So did you know that the prophets that we have been learning about all fall actually did the same thing when they told people about the birth of Jesus? Go grab your deep blue Bibles and let's check it out. Okay, everybody got their Bibles? Perfect. So God's people knew that he was going to send a savior, but how would they even know where to look or if they had the right person? They needed some hints. So our first hint is in the book of Isaiah in chapter seven, verse 14, and it's on page 773 in your Bible. So let's read that together. Let's see. Therefore, the Lord will give you a sign. The young woman is pregnant and is about to give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. Okay, so now we know that a young woman will have a baby boy and name him Emmanuel. Here's a fun fact. The name Emmanuel means God is with us, which seems like a pretty appropriate name for a savior. You think? I do. Well, that's a good start. But I'm guessing there was a lot of baby boys being born and trying to find the right boy named Emmanuel would have been a tall task. So we could use another hint. So for our next hint, we're gonna to go to the book of Jeremiah. We learned about him this fall too. So Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 through 16, and it is on page 878 in your Bible. All right, we're gonna read that together. Here we go. 
The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill my gracious promise with the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous branch from David's line who will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is what he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. All right, so that narrows it down because we've got a baby boy named Emmanuel from King David's line. Well, that takes a whole lot of people out of the mix, but it would still be helpful just to have another hint, don't you think? We've got more. For our last hint, let's go to the book of Micah. So Micah chapter five, verse two, is on page 1021 in your Bible. So let's read that verse together. As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who's to be a ruler in Israel on my behalf will come out from you. His origin is from remote times, from ancient days. All right, so now we know, okay, city of Bethlehem. We know that's where we're looking. So let me tell you a little bit about the city of Bethlehem. It was not a big city. It was not a capital city. It didn't have palaces or armies or any kind of big city stuff. It was actually a pretty small town. But thanks to these three prophets, God's people learned that they should look for a baby boy from King David's line in a tiny little town of Bethlehem. Pretty cool, right? That brings us to a couple of different things that you're gonna see on Christ Kids TV now that we've entered the season of Advent. There's an Advent week that you learned about during pastor time today. Each week, we will light a candle together until Christmas Eve when all five candles will be lit. And when we light these candles, I want you to remember that God shared his light with you so you can share your light with others. Now check this out. Does this look familiar to any of you? I bet it does. It's a nativity. You may have one or two or however many in your house. Notice anything strange about this nativity? It's empty. Each week, we are going to be adding a new figure to this nativity and learning more about it. You wanna know what we're gonna add first? Tune in next week to Christ Kids TV and you will find out. See you then, everybody have a great week. Bye. Thanks for joining us this week on Christ Kids TV. 